In this overview video, we're going to give you a quick introduction to 3D components within Aspire. Component is the name we give to a 3D object within the software. We can see here we have a couple of components displayed at the moment. We have the bunch of grapes if I select them, and we have the leaf and stem as a separate component here. There are a number of ways that you can create a component. The three main ones are that you may build your own components using the vectors and the modeling tools within the software. You can import an existing component, which may be something you'd made previously in Aspire, or a piece of three-dimensional clip art, or a 3D mesh from another CAD program. And you can also create components automatically from imported bitmaps. All of these functions and techniques will be dealt with throughout the different tutorials as you work your way through the training materials. When you have components in your part, you'll see them listed under the component tree area on the modeling tab. We can see our two components here. Under the component tree, I can select these components by clicking on their name in the list, and I can also draw and undraw them by using the checkboxes here. If we uncheck, the component will be undrawn. If we check it, the component will be drawn. These icons that are in between the checkbox and the name of the component are very important because they indicate the component's combine mode. The combine mode is how this component will interact with the other components in the component tree list. If I right mouse click and go into combine mode here, we can see that we have four options to add, subtract, merge or low. If I change this from merge to add, I can see that the icon changes here, and in the 3D view, I can see now that where those two components overlap, their product is adding together. If we turn that back um, into merge by clicking combine mode and coming to merge, we can see it returns to its original state that this part was in, where the two pieces are merging together where they overlap. The other key feature of the component tree is the order that you'll find the components in. In this case, we only have two components, so it's not really going to matter. But as you create more components, what you see in the composite model, which is the 3D object that you see in the screen here, is going to be defined by how these components interact with the ones above them in the list. So the software always starts at the top and works its way down using the combine mode to define how the components are going to relate to the parts above them in the list. You'll see many examples of this throughout the tutorials. Depending on what we're planning to do to a component, a component can be a single object and we can also create groups of components as well. In this case, all these grapes are grouped objects. They're a single component, which was a grape, where many copies have been made. And if I click on this little plus mark, which is an indicator that this is a group, I can see all the subcomponents within my group there. We'll deal in more detail in another one of the overview videos with grouping and also with a concept called baking. If we come down to the modeling tools here, one of the most important tools I have when working with a component is this wrench icon, which is allows me to go in and edit the properties of a component. If we click on our grapes to select them here and go over and click on the wrench, we can see it displays the name, it displays the combine mode of it, and very important information such as the height, any base height, and also gives me the ability to fade and tilt that component. Again, these tools and parameters are going to be dealt with in much more detail throughout the rest of the tutorials, so we won't dwell on them here. I will just reference the appearance area of the properties menu down the bottom though. This is a way that we can affect what color or material the component has in the 3D view. And for visualization purposes, if you want to present your customer with a rendered image of the part, then this is a really useful feature. With the grape selected, if I come down and click on the drop-down box, I could choose something like solid color. I then have this option here to choose from, and we can see that there's kind of a red tinge to the grapes, and that's because these are selected objects at the moment. If we come down and uncheck this highlight selected components, then it'll display in the color, and I can now come and choose from the options that I've got in the list here, and maybe we'll choose something like this plum color to display those in. If I close that now, you can see when I deselect it, the plum color is represented by the grapes, but because I haven't defined a separate material for the leaf, we can see that coming through the top of the leaf. 
So let's click on the leaf, come over to the properties for that. Instead of same as parent, we'll go ahead and choose solid color again. And then from the drop down list, we'll just choose something like dark green. We can close that. And when we deselect it, we can see that that's been given that property. There are many ways to edit and manipulate components. We can, for instance, just click on a component in order to select it, click again to go into transform mode, and then much as we can with a vector, we could use these handles around it, either to change its size or to rotate it or to do one of the other operations that's available to change it dynamically. We can select multiple components with that selected if I hold shift and click on another component then that becomes part of the selection and now we can dynamically edit both of those together as well as the dynamic editing we have the object editing that we have in the menu to specifically move it to a certain position or set a certain size if we click set size we could come in and say we wanted this to be exactly a width of 10 inches hit apply I could close that and then I could use the align objects to center that in the material So there you've seen a brief introduction to components and how to work with them. In some of the following overview videos, you'll be able to see specific examples to discuss how you divide, group and bake components, distortion and scaling components height. And then of course the components are a very, very key part of Aspire. And so you're going to see these used and covered extensively throughout the rest of the tutorials.